everybody. I'm going to put together a series of videos to help walk you through this lab and um, it's going to be broken up into different sections uh, based on whether I'm doing something on paper or whether I'm showing you the lab so that it doesn't take me time for the transition. So look for multiple videos for that reason. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go over the checkup questions with you to make sure you understand what is going on with this lab. And the first thing uh, is this is going to be a Boyle's Law lab. So we're going to take a look at the relationship between pressure and volume. And you picked up your lab apparatus at the last pickup day, so that was good. It looked like everybody had done that and has what they need for this lab. So I trust that you read the pre-lab part here. I want to turn over the page and take a look at the checkup questions to make sure you understand what is going to be going on in this lab. So the first question says, State Boyle's Law and give its mathematical formula as a review of what we are doing here. So Boyle's Law, remember, says that the volume of a fixed amount of gas is inversely proportional to its pressure if the temperature is held constant. And the mathematical equation for this is P1V1 equals P2V2. So this is the equation we're going to be using. Now, some review on conversion. The local air pressure is reported on a local weather forecast is 30.19 inches of mercury. Calculate the pressure in units of A atmosphere and B tours using significant digits properly. Now, we did not use this unit, inches of mercury when we were doing our conversions, because in science class we generally use metric, but this is how it is reported on the weather forecast. And when we get to that part, I will bring up a weather forecast and show you exactly where to find those values. So because we don't use those values per se, uh, in science class, let's convert them to atmospheres. Now on the front of the lab, you were given a conversion factor for inches of mercury to atmospheres. And so here is my calculation. I started with 30.19 inches of mercury. And the conversion factor you were given on the first page was that 29.92 inches of mercury is one atmosphere. So notice I make sure that these are on the top and the bottom so they cross out and I'm left with atmosphere. So when I divide 30.19 by 29.92, I get 1.009 atmospheres. Now look, four significant digits, four, four in that answer. Now that I'm in atmospheres, I can get to tour. And remember from our section on pressure conversion, 1.09 atmospheres. Well, I want to get from atmospheres to tor. The conversion factor is one atmosphere is 760 tor, and I have to make sure that my atmospheres cancel out here. So when I multiply 1.009 by 760, I get 767 tor, three significant digits, three here. Okay. So the next checkup question to make sure we know what's going on is without using a Boyle's Law apparatus, how could you calculate the new volume of a system after additional pressure had been applied to it? So here is the answer. You can calculate the expected new volume by using the equation P1V1 equals P2V2 and solving for V2. The resulting equation would be V2 equals P1 V1 over P2. So we can use that equation, but we're going to use an apparatus to just double check and see that this equation really works.
Why can Boyle's Law not be verified by simply multiplying the volume of the trapped gas by the additional force placed upon it in each trial? From the front of the lab, you learn that the only f the force is not just from the mass on top. There is also force from the atmosphere on this apparatus. So we have to take that into account. So the total pressure must be considered, which includes the unnoticed atmospheric pressure as well as the additional pressure from the mass placed on the Boyle's Law apparatus. So we have to add in that additional atmospheric pressure. That's why we're going to look that up on your computer. How will you convert each mass placed on the apparatus to a pressure unit? So the mass has to be converted to pressure. The way we are going to do that is we are going to divide the mass by the cross-sectional area of the syringe to get pounds per square inch, or PSI. Uh, and I will show you how to do that when we do the lab. So there are a number of calculations we are going to be doing in this lab. Uh, we're going to be doing pressure conversions, we're going to be converting from mass to pressure. So there's going to be a lot to keep track of. We're going to be graphing. Uh, and I will walk you through that step by step. So be on the lookout for the next video.